This is Jessica Joy Ravellis with Women Who Work TV live in Hollywood. It's Wednesday, a little afternoon here. I'm at WCOBM. And today I'm bringing you information on how to go from wallflower, believe it or not, to power networker. It is totally possible. So I'm going to go over some of my insider secrets and tips on how to do this. But I want to start off with a personal story. And for those of you who regularly watch the show, for those of you who know me and who have met me probably in the last five to eight years, know that I have a big personality. However, it wasn't always that way. I grew up extremely shy and it's hard for people who meet me now to believe that because everything that I do revolves around interacting with people, being on camera, on you know, being live on video every week, and networking. I do a lot of networking in Los Angeles and Orange Counties. So it's really hard for people to imagine me as anything different, as anything so opposite of what I am today and, and my personality today. But when I was a little girl and even really up until the end of college, um, believe it or not, I was I was extremely introverted. And there's a couple things that are interesting about that. I think even in my my nature and how I am today, there's still some of those characteristics that that are more on the introvert side that I still have. And I'll talk a little bit about that. But I did start out pretty young um, being just petrified that the teacher would ever call on me. I, I never wanted to go to recess. I would beg and beg and plead for the teachers to please let me stay indoors and read my book or maybe just help with the class and organize papers. I just did not want to interact with other kids. I was the last person chosen on the dodgeball team, on the baseball team, and I was deathly afraid of getting hit by the ball or being any other way, in any other way, singled out on in PE on the on the field and the blacktop. And so that was the kid that I grew up as. And and it carried into high school as well. Um, as I got older, it didn't really get any better. I just, I did, I definitely developed more friendships as I got older. But in high school, even, I just, uh, I, I think I did cross country. I was on the cross country team. But even that was a sport where there was no ball involved, obviously. And it was solitary in a way uh, where, where I was, you know, I could run on my own and kind of be in my own frame of mind, be alone with my thoughts and still be a part of a team, which was kind of cool. So I came out of my shell just a little bit, but, and I was in the band as well in the orchestra, but I still was pretty shy in terms of, you know, I definitely wasn't the popular kid. I wasn't on the ASB or anything like that. Um, I did go to some school dances, but I really kind of stayed um, uh, up on the sidelines and I really was a wallflower. So fast forward and I, you know, at, at the time I was at USC as an undergrad and people asked me, what was it that really helped you come out of your shell? How did you break out of that introvert, shy personality that you had? And interestingly, I think I, I think what really did it for me was I fell into this job as a tutor and I worked at USC through the, a program called the Joint Educational Program, which is still in place today. And I worked as a tutor and ultimately um, started coordinating one of the programs at the family of five schools surrounding the university. And I worked with inner city youth to help develop reading, writing, and math skills. And we primarily did one-on-one -on -one tutoring for the kids. Uh, I worked with a lot of elementary school age kids from between first to third grade is kind of my, was my focus at the time. And then uh, I ended up coordinating the program as well as some of the after school activities. And that built my confidence because suddenly I had these little kids that I was responsible for and we had this one-on-one -on -one time. And I, and I now, even today, I tend to be much better one-on-one, -on -one, um, even though that's still, I think, hard for people to believe. Uh, but, uh, but I spent a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with these kids and they were just so in love with the activities that I had planned and, and I could be goofy with them and silly. And they were sometimes shy, so I would have to draw them out of their shells. 
and uh, and I it, it was just kind of like this unconditional bond and trust and um, affection that they developed for me that you know we we built a rapport and I could be so silly and come up with character voices and fun activities and tell them jokes and all my jokes were funny even though I don't consider myself a very funny person um, but I but I was silly and they would laugh and you know and have a good time with me so that initially brought me out of my shell. So I built some confidence and eventually, as many people know who tune into the show or who have in the past and who know me now, as you know, I ended up running my own tutoring business and it was mildly successful. I did that for a couple years and then I went on and I continued working in, in supplemental education with kids up until uh, pre-K to 12th grade kids. And then I did that up until I had my son. And it, and it was it was a great experience. It's what really brought me out of my shell. From then on, I just made it my mission that I was going to be as likable as I could and talk to as many people as I could to really understand, you know, what I wanted to do for a career, to learn more and to build relationships that would help me achieve my goals. Because I finally realized that being introverted and being to, you know, keeping to myself, it wasn't helping me get ahead. It wasn't helping me set and achieve goals. And so it was actually hindering me and holding me back. Um, one of the tutoring jobs that I had right out of college, it was my first full-time real job in the workforce. And I, uh, I had to manage a tutoring program and it required me to really come out of my shell. And I had to not only teach the students and learn to interact with staff and hire and train and onboard staff um, and help them with their personal development. I had that component. And then I had another component where I was interacting with kids and I was giving them high fives and we were excited and laughing and, and learning together and interacting with the lesson plans that were primarily computerized. And then some of them were actually um you know, based on where I was working one on one, coaching them and working on workbooks and working with lesson plans and manipulatives. And so we had these two different types of tutoring um, programs and we had the kids on one hand and my staff on the other hand. And so I really had to start to interact with other people and engage on these different levels. Then I had a third audience, which were the parents, the kids' parents, and I had to adapt and be able to speak professionally about the progress or lack of progress that kids were making and be able to talk to that audience as well. And so there were these three different audiences that I was balancing. And I learned through training and going through my own professional development with that company. Um, and then as I went on, I learned how to ask for help, how to um, look people in the eye, how to speak professionally. I learned about giving a firm handshake and, and being able to convey just you know with through gestures facial expressions tone and and my handshake how to convey a strong personality um, in a good way uh, a professional uh, persona I guess you could say so all of those things were really instrumental in, for me in not only overcoming my fear of interacting uh, with other people and in being involved in situations where I was you know, essentially I had to perform in front of an audience or a crowd or interact on that level. Um, that was super helpful, those live experiences that I had. But it was really falling into working with kids and tutoring that initially brought me out of my shell and brought my more of my personality out. And that's the personality, the silly part of me that my family saw from day to day. So that gives you a little bit of context into how I started out. Now, people that know me today know that I'm very charismatic and dynamic. I talk obviously with my hands. I smile a lot. Um, I, you know, I do wear a lot of makeup and I have kind of an interesting look. Um, sometimes I think it's disarming for people. Other times I get different compliments. So, um, but anyway, I've obviously over the years and now in my thirties, I've come into my, into who I really authentically am. 
obviously I accept myself who I am. I love myself. And I think that comes across in my personality when I'm networking as well. Not only do I accept and love myself and have, um, I'm, I'm very secure in who I am and what I want out of life and out of my career, um, which comes across, but I also love what I do. I'm super passionate about what I do. And so that's also something, you know, I can't teach that to you, but I can convey that having, you know, um, internally feeling at peace and happy with yourself and what you do and the purpose that you have is really, really key to taking regular networking, which is just kind of, you know, meeting someone and maybe having a great conversation to what I like to call power networking, which is then kicking it up a notch, you know, really having, making an impression on someone where they want to be a part of your circle. They want to connect with you. They want to do business with you. And there's going to be some kind of exchange. And that person, that connection has the potential to then transform your business in some way or change you in a, in a dynamic way. So I think, you know, all of those things working together, past experiences, um, you know, coming into your own, having a purpose, loving what you do. Those are all things that play into power networking and being able to really elevate your, your game and your career to the next level and hopefully your business as well. So when I come back, I'm going to actually go into real tips and I'm going to unpack what it is, what's the secret sauce to helping you go from wallflower to power networker and really also look at the difference between, you know, kind of just like an average, average exchange, kind of, you know, exchanging the business card, meeting someone um, and maybe having a great conversation to, again, what I call power networking, which is, you know, now let's translate that interaction, that positive interaction into an experience that can somehow change your business, your life, or even that person in a positive way. So uh, we'll talk about those tips to becoming a power networker. And then I'll get into the invitation that I have to you for an event that's coming up that you do not want to miss. So in the meantime, you can check out my website, learn a little bit more about me at jessicajoyrevelis.com. And I will be back in a few moments with more on power networking.